<sighs> That's not the sound of me just being happy because I woke up on vacation, 5,000 miles away from work. No. That's the sound of me being happy that I'm not part of the small percentage of people that have problems with Apple products. And remember, if you're having a problem with an Apple product that was designed poorly, you're not just part of a small percentage. You're part of a very small percentage. In fact, you probably don't even exist, like Paul Daniels and all those other people that just get paid by NASA to convince the Earth that the world is round when it's actually flat. So you know that issue with the new MacBook Pros whereby when you open and close the device, it stops working? Here, I'll demonstrate over here. You can see that when the device is opened, the screen goes out. This is an issue where the display cable is a little too short and it's not designed for the stress that it occurs when you're opening and closing the laptop. You know, that thing that other companies figured out over 25 years ago. So they've released an extended warranty service program here for this issue. Granted, it is a little too late. This machine came out three years ago. Lots of people have probably purchased new ones or paid for costly repairs and display assembly replacements on this when it's something that Apple should have covered. This is one of the most flawed MacBooks that Apple has ever produced. And it's not just this issue. It's a series of issues. So before this, I was talking about it, I reviewed it in this video, and I was talking about how I thought the keyboard was junk, and now somebody did respond and say, ah, 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 that's, that's a dumb complaint, why are you complaining that's junk? And then I provided my argument for why it was junk, and then, well, there's also the issue of the data line for the image being right next to a power line. So when you're designing a product, if you have a power line that's anywhere from 36 to 52 volts, you typically would have some sort of space between that 52 volt power line and that teeny tiny one volt data line that is going to something like a processor that's soldered onto the board. You know, we're, we're not trying to do any sort of line of stuff here and send 52 volts to the CPU to see if we can make it go faster. That, 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 that's not how we do things. So this machine differs from the old machines and the way they've been designing these machines for over 15 years by not having any sort of ground pin or any sort of buffer between the 50 volt power line for the screen's backlight and the image data line that goes directly to the CPU, which is in fail of epic proportions. This is some sort of, we're having first year interns do the PCB layout and we're not having it checked by senior staff kind of thing, if there even is a senior staff designing this stuff anymore. And I went over that in this video, which you can see, I'll link it below, where I show you what the repair is when this happens, because on the 15 inch machines, it goes to the a MUX chip, not directly to the CPU. On the 15 inch ones, it's fixable. On the 13 inch ones, it's only fixable if you can find quality replacement BGA CPUs, which is not very simple to do. So we have a machine here where if you simply open and close the laptop, the laptop will stop working. Then at the same time, we have a machine where if there's just, you know, you, just, you know, humidity in your room or something like that, you will wind up with a connector that looks like this. So let me just bring that up in this video and I'm going to show you what that connector looks like right here. Yeah, so you can see right here what happens when that ha when this occurs. So you have your 52 volt power line right next to your CPU data line, and you're at a point where it's not just oh I blew a backlight fuse or oh I have to replace a connector. You just send 52 volts to the CPU on a device whose SSD is soldered to the motherboard. Great job. Now I know a lot of you are going to say, well you can't predict the future, right? You can't tell ahead of time what the flaws in a product are going to be. You can't expect that to happen. And I get it. When you have first year interns designing your product so that Tim Cook and Angela Renditz can get ni nicer condo, better car. You can't expect the first year intern to be able to, at the very least, get right the aspects of laptop design that almost every other company has gotten right for over 25 years. But I get that. You can't fit, you can't know ahead of time. I understand being able to design a product so that it can open and then be closed and then opened again in 2017 when you have only $200 billion in the bank and not a lot of human capital available. It's just... It's hard, but here's where this starts to get fishy. They changed the design of the 2018 model. So they lengthened this cable. They knew that this was too short. They knew that this cable was too delicate. So they changed it. They knew that this was happening. They knew that this was broken and they were still charging customers the full price for display assembly replacement when they would have this issue up until now. So they knew that this was a problem. They were fully aware of the fact that this machine had a design defect and they waited this long to come up with a extended warranty program. This is one of those things that I want you to really think about. How did you feel 
reading this, knowing that you paid four to six hundred dollars to have this fixed just a few months ago, when not only did they come out with an extended warranty program now, but they knew it was faulty all along. They changed the design because they knew it was faulty. And that individual that was telling you, you need to pay four to six hundred dollars for something that was your fault is something that they knew all along was actually their fault. And it's something that I think people should think about when it comes to any company they do business with, not just Apple. If you are regularly swiping your credit card, I think that you should suggest politely that the company that you're swiping your credit card with treat you like a human being and not a cash pinata. Because if enough people do that, then maybe you will actually start getting treated like a human being rather than a cash pinata. Think about it. Think about it. This is part of a larger pattern. You have to remember, this is the company that decided instead of having the backplate be one piece, we're gonna have the hinge and backplate section be two pieces of aluminum that are glued together. And then we're gonna have the exhaust fan blow the air out onto the part that is glued together that all the stress of the machine is on so that it falls apart, as you can see in this video, where the part that the hinge screws to is separating from the back plate because it is held together by what looks like some knockoff of liquid nails. And the reason that this is occurring is because the exhaust fans on the bottom, rather than exhausting out the side of the machine or any other section, are exhausting the hot air right onto the part of the machine that's glued together. This is one of the only companies on earth that I've ever managed to see make a laptop that has as a known failure mode be a bad SATA cable. And keep in mind, this machine is not cheap by any stretch of the imagination. If you take a look here, it's not like a lot of the other companies where you could say, well, you know, it, it's not the greatest made thing, but it's a cheap piece of shit. We're talking about a company where you can pay over $1,800 and in 2019, $1,800 gets you eight effing gigabytes of RAM and an SSD that you cannot upgrade that is soldered onto the board. So if your machine fails, you can't just take the SSD out and put it into another machine and get back to work because it's soldered onto the board. And if you want to buy the version of this machine that does not have the SSD soldered in, you are still fucked because they still fail. Look at this. Somebody rightly pointed out on Mac Rumors that this device seems to have the all-time number of service programs and problems. Look at this. Battery replacement program, keyboard service replacement program for the butterfly keyboards, SSDs failing, display failing. And again, that does not even cover the fact that their machines send 52 volts to the CPU. Again, perhaps some sort of Linus overclocking tactic that I don't suggest you try on your MacBook. This is becoming a joke. I actually do want to do a video in the next few days that goes over the list of recommended Apple products that I would suggest that you get if you do need a MacBook for work or because the software that you uh, run only runs properly on a Mac or just because you like the Mac ecosystem, I'm going to go over and come up with a list for you of the machines that you should get and my argument as to why you should purchase those machines as opposed to others. And I'm going to base that on durability because I get this question a lot. Which model should I get if it's not this one? And there are a few models that you can get where you're not going to have a lot of these ridiculous issues where you actually have a chance of buying a machine that might actually last and not kill itself for no good reason. But this, this, this is too much. People who bought this machine honestly should just ask for the money back at this point because it's, it's too much that's going wrong with one machine. Your display is going to fail if you open it and close it. Your keys are going to fail if you type on it. If your room is humid, your CPU is going to get overclocked at 52 volts. I mean, and, and it costs $1,800 for 8 gigabytes of RAM. And the SSD is soldered on. This is a meme. I, I don't, I don't really, I, I just, I have no words. I have nothing else to say. Small number, small number, small number, small number, small number, small number, small number. You're gonna die on cancer, I promise. Small number. You're gonna die on cancer, I promise. Holy shit.